Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm your host, RJ. In this show, we take a new ingredient every week. It's going to be an ingredient you can find at your local supermarket, and we're going to teach you how to make a wonderful recipe with it. So stick around and check out the recipe. Oh, hello. Welcome to Tuesdays at 2 from the Swiss Diamond Kitchen. You may have heard that already. You may not have. Um, we, we haven't been here in a while. Sorry about that. Last week, I was out. Um, and we got super busy trying to put everything together for the upcoming holidays, but we are back. I don't know if you remember two weeks ago, um, we're picking out of the bucket, well, out of a mixing bowl, uh, at the end of the show to figure out the ingredient for the next week. We picked pomegranate two weeks ago. So I'm coming at you this week with three recipes that we're using pomegranate. Um, I'm going to use two with real pomegranates, one with pomegranate juice in case you're intimidated by the actual, uh, peeling of a pomegranate. But don't worry, we're going to go through that as well. Uh, make sure that you know how to go into that. They really don't take any time. They're not real hard. Um, so long as you trim these up right, they separate flour out right, uh, right perfectly. Um, and you'll end up with, you can see I've already done some, you end up with skin-free pomegranate seeds. Or aerosols? I don't really know how to pronounce the word. Um, so, without taking too much longer, let's get started into this before I explain too much about Swiss Diamond. This today is going to take a little bit longer than usual. We usually shoot for 25 to 30 minutes. Since I'm doing three recipes, I really wanted to show off this ingredient. I think it's going to take us a few minutes longer. So let's start, and then I'll get back into the Swiss diamond. So what I have here is I have three salmon fillets. Um, I've already taken the skin off. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is full fillet. There's no bone, no skin. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm taking it, or I'm taking the fillets. I'm going to drop them into this bowl. You can do this with uh, with any any mixing bowl or any bowl you have or anything you have that's going to be high enough to be able to kind of cover this stuff. I'm taking a cup and a half of pomegranate juice. This is uh, pomegranate juice right off the shelf from your local store. Um, you don't have to juice the pomegranate yourself. The big, I don't know, half gallon of it or whatever, I think costs us $4, $5, something like that. Um, it's a huge time saver, um, and it stays forever, and it's pretty delicious, so you can use it for drinks later. I am also using a... Mm, tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. Um, I go with the full sodium stuff. Uh, the low sodium st sodium stuff to me, it has, uh, obviously it has less sodium, but it has other chemicals in there to make the saltiness come out the same. I like the umami and salty flavor of the original. If you have a sodium issue, by all means, recipe can be made the other way. Uh, one clove of garlic minced. You don't need to go overboard with the garlic on this. Um, the, the fresh allicin from this, they're fresh. Uh, sorry, fresh clove of garlic. If you use this stuff out of a jar, go with one and a half, get a little bit more in there. The fresh allicin out of this is going to really pop once it sits in the pomegranate juice and sits in the um, soy sauce. So we're going to let that sit for about five minutes. Uh, you can refrigerate it. You don't have to since it's such a short marinade. You don't need to, you don't need to marinate salmon for, for too terribly long. Oh, guys, I have a little place to put dishes this time. Um, you don't have to let salmon marinate for too terribly long, especially if you have a high acid uh, marinate, what's going to happen is you're going to gray out the fish. Nobody wants to eat it. So five, 10 minutes is really all you need to do for these. Um, so we're going to let that sit. We are going to use the juices. We are going to use the marinade um, in the future. So we're going to let that sit, but make sure you reserve those when you get to it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm moving on to the salad we're going to serve this with. Uh, I'm going to move this out of the way too, because get the raw salmon out of the way. We'll keep that because we'll be able to use that. All right. So this is a pomegranate, if you guys have never seen one. I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see it. Well, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it. Uh, so what we want is we want the insides out of it. These are all the seeds from the inside. Um, when you get in, you'll find there's a lot of flesh as well. We're going to try to get rid of the flesh, keep the seeds. The seeds, is, the seeds are the great part. So what we're going to do is you take, there's a bottom and a top. The top has kind of the flower bud on it. I think you can see that. Um, the bottom you can see is kind of where the stem is, where it grew. They grow this way. Um, so we're going to go about to where the, the top of the sphere here starts to, starts to even out and you want to stick your knife in really just enough to get through that skin. You only need to go maybe a quarter inch or so. Um, does this do anything? Can you see that? I don't know. No, not worth it. Okay, cool. So you're only going in a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, and you're gonna be able to pop that top right off. Give it a little twist. I have to get in a little bit with fingers. You can see inside is, are the seeds that we're looking for. That's the fleshy part, the white part that, we, that we're that we going to discard. Um, so sometimes when you pop that up, you'll see right in the center here, you'll see there's a pretty big, um, I don't know, 
stem instead it's not the stem i like to go around the center of this just a little bit um, and cut out almost a divot see just that little bit what that's going to do is that's going to break apart <clears throat> excuse me the um the veins of this and let me be able to split it so if you look in here you can see it's kind of like a tomato you've got the the ridges in here and what you want to do is you want to take your knife and go about the same distance you did going down and go in between those ridges okay so not on top of the ridges you want to go in between the ridges um, and there's going to be what five, I think in most of these, you're going to want to, Oh, you're going to want to do this over a bowl. You're not going to be wanting to wear a white shirt or white pants or white anything. Um, you, it, this stuff, the, uh, the pomegranate juice will stain, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I've done is you can see that I peeled it or I've cut it and now I can peel it into pieces here and see how it's got all the, um, all the skin in there around, ugh, around the fruit seeds. So we want to keep those fruit seeds and we we'll get rid of the skin. So what you do is, so it'll break apart. That's okay. You take it and you bend it backwards. You should be able to just dig all those out. Um, a little bit of the flesh is going to fall in there. No big deal. You can pick it out in a second. Um, again, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but there's really no reason to be intimidated by these. Um, one of these pomegranates is going to be able to do all of the recipes I'm showing you today. Uh, I just wanted to do two because I'm going to end up double cooking. Because again, if you guys haven't been here, I've got a crew I have to feed after this. Um, right. So pomegranates are a, so the juice or the, the, the fruit part, right, is the seeds. I've kind of went through that. Inside the seeds, there is a, I don't know, like almost a seed. I don't know if you've ever had a grape with the seeds in them. You know those seeds that are, they're edible. They're just a little tough. These have that. You're more, you know, you definitely can eat those. It doesn't hurt anything. But I just wanted to let you know when you bite into it, there's a little crunchy part. But it's not like a pit. You're not going to break a tooth. Um, not going to hurt yourself at all. It's definitely okay to eat. Um, you know, if you juice them, you get rid of it. But there's no way to really use these. I use that, uh, or there's no really, sorry, there's no way to really get rid of those and still use the whole um, seed. So I use that as texture in a salad, as you'll see today, um, a dessert, which you'll also see today. All right, so we got that peeled out. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and work on that salad I was mentioning um, and give the salmon just another minute or two to kind of, uh, oh, see see how red my hands are? And look, my, my rag's already purple. Um, so again, don't wear white. All right. All right, so I'm going to set these to the side. We don't need them right this minute. Bring in a fresh cutting board. Clean knife. All right, so what we're doing next is we're going to, you need a bowl. Where did my salad bowl go? Ah. Thank you. Going to need a bowl. Uh, pretty easy salad recipe. So what, you're, what you need to do first, and we've pre-done this because this part takes about 30 minutes. What you want to do first, you want to take a red onion and slice it thinly. <clears throat> Excuse me. On top of that red onion, you want to put a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Um, and you want to use, what did I use? A, I just wrote down lemon juice. I use two tablespoons of lemon juice. Um, you can also use um, sumac. I don't know if you've ever used sumac, the seasoning. Uh, it is a lemony... Uh, gr like a lemony grassy um, seasoning they didn't have that in my local store I went with lemon juice flavors are going to be just the same I just threw a touch of salt in there that's just going to draw a little bit of this liquid so you want to let that sit for about a half hour uh, a little bit longer is not going to hurt overnight actually will be fine if you go much longer than overnight the onions will start to break down um, and they'll be more like a pickled onion but you didn't put any vinegar in there so they won't taste like a pickled onion they'll be super lemony that's not what we're going for um, all right so step one is to get that done so we're going to toss all those together, and then we're going to take the we're going to take uh, olive oil. So we've got three tablespoons of olive oil for this one, and we've got honey, a tablespoon and a half of honey. All right, so we put the honey in there, um, and then we're using Red wine vinegar, about two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. We're just going to take those, mix those up, get them good and emulsified. Take the onions, toss those in there. 
Okay. Same thing. Mix those up. Where's our set of tongs? Here we go. We have some Swiss diamond tongs here. Um, again, you can buy those down below. The link will be down below on our Amazon page. Um, oh, all right. So I'm taking two bunches of flat leaf, flat leaf parsley and just doing a rough cut. Uh, usually I say down to the band. So where they have it wrapped is about as far as you want to go. On the flat leaf parsley, you can definitely use the stem. You just want to make sure it's still the tender stem. You don't want it to be in the, you know, if it's tough and it's hard and it feels like a twig, then you've went too far. You don't want to put that in stuff. Um, so you're just really rough cutting this. So this is Italian flat leaf parsley. You can use uh, curly parsley or curly Q parsley, depending on where you're from. Um, it's going to be a totally different flavor. It'll definitely be more like a tabula as opposed to a, a fresh spring salad. Uh, but it would still be delicious. So if that's the only thing you can find, it's definitely worth a try. All right, so we're going to get these tongs here. And we're going to mix this all up. And so we're going to let this set. And we, what we want to do is we want to let that parsley wilt just a touch. Um, I'm not going to put the pomegranate in yet. We're going to do that right before we plate. Speaking of plating, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a Swiss Diamond nonstick pan. I do recommend nonstick for this one because you're going to be using some sugar uh, from the juices and everything for the salmon, as well as you want to try to create a crust on the top. I'll show you. Um, so I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get this thing pretty hot. If you're going to preheat it, preheat it over medium heat. Um, if you're going to use it right away, go ahead and crank it up, get it to where it needs to be. As soon as it'll boil water, um, you know, as soon as you put a little water in and it sizzles, that's hot. Start the next step. But wait, before we continue, do me a favor, click that like button, subscribe to us if you haven't already, make sure you've hit the bell so you get our notifications and comment down below. I know you don't like everything I do, so let me hear it. Now back to the recipe. You guys, I'm so excited about pomegranate day. Uh, I wish this was the spring because I would be making this probably every day for the next three weeks. All right, so what we're doing is we want to test this and see if it's hot. It's not quite hot yet. Um, can I swap these? They're just going to yell at me. Nope. All right, perfect. That's going to be better for me. Okay, so with this salmon, what we want to do, um, you can use spatula, you can use um, uh, tongs, kind of whatever you got. I'm trying to make sure that I keep raw fish stuff away from good food or edible food or clean food or whatever we want to call it. So what we're doing is we want to take our salmon fillets and we want to lay it skin side up. I know the skin's off of this, but where the skin is or was, I mean, you want to lay that up. Because what you want to do is you want to put these in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a crust of sorts on the top of the salmon on the flesh side of the salmon um and the skin side just doesn't hold that crust as well so this is the way you're going to want to do it so i probably got this pan a little hot for this i'll turn it down but you do want to make sure you get that sizzle going into the pan all right and for this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this juice and i'm gonna put it right in there so if you remember, that is uh, pomegranate juice that we use. It's um, soy sauce, garlic. That's all that's in this. So here we're going to crank that all the way up. We're going to just get it to a boil, let it simmer um, for the time it takes me to do this. And by do this, I mean get a crust on these fish. Um, and then we are going to pour it over top, finish it off, lid it. So that we don't overcook, uh, the, so we don't over dry out the salmon. Keep that salmon nice and moist throughout the meat, and it will get served over the salad, which is going to be delicious. All right, so you can see this has already started to boil here. Um, the bad thing about pomegranate juice, the thing I don't love about pomegranate juice, especially when cooking in front of people, is that it looks brown. Um, it's not brown. It's just the way that it's been processed. It's not a bright red like you're going to see here. You notice that great color you get here. Um, I don't know if you saw me pour that in there. Pomegranate juice is very much, uh, it's just a dulled out, I guess, red color, more of a maroon, something like that. So what I'm wanting to do here is I want to, I want to um, reduce that by about half. It's going to bring everything up to boil. It's going to clean it off because it's going to be above boiling, so it'll sterilize it. Um, and it's going to reduce it, which will make it thick, which will make it more of a glaze as opposed to a wet sauce. We're not looking for a wet sauce for this meal. Um, I reserve my wet sauces for basically pasta. 
or soup. There's no other reason to me. I like everything else to be thickened. Uh, I try not to use thickening agents when I don't need to. Obviously, sugar is a thickening agent, and then you can boil down um, the liquid out of it using evaporation and all that fun stuff. Okay, so I was wrong. This is our um, ten and a half inch or ten and a quarter inch uh, fry pan. I can see everything now. So this is my 10 and a quarter inch fry pan. Uh, we have it on sale for $119.95. It's linked down below. Um, this is our, again, this is the 8 inch saute, um, saucepan. It comes with a lid, which I don't have with me, but it looks like this one. Excuse the green from the salad here. It looks like this one except for a little smaller. Uh, tempered glass, heat, uh, uh, vent knob for steam, sorry. Uh, stainless steel rim, keep everything sealed, everything together. In a minute, we're going to be using a couple other pans. We'll bring those up. I've got a bunch of lines here, guys. Right, boom, that's what we're looking for. Now we're going to turn this way down. So we've got a nice blackened um, crust on there. We're going to turn this way down. I've turned it all the way down to warm. I've got this down. Uh oh, here comes a lot of noise, guys. All right, so we've got this about halfway simmered down. I'm going to use a little bit of this, about half of it, to pour over. It's going to create that steam. Ah! Covering it, that's how we're finishing our fish, okay? I probably need a little bit more just liquid in here. All right, there we go. That's how we're finishing our fish. We're going to keep that closed. Turn this back so that we don't set off the fire alarm, because um, then that's a whole other show. All right, so. All right, all right, turn off. So you can see here we've got this pretty, uh, pretty reduced. It's still liquidy. But you're not going to get it all the way to uh, you're not going to get it all the way to a gel. Just not how it works, especially not that hot. As we let it cool down, it's actually going to condense a little bit more. Um, all the sugar is going to come back together. Excuse me, um, and it's going to make it a little bit thicker. So as we do this, we got oh so about three minutes on the first side. It creates that crust on super high heat. Um, you can see that browned out. That's because of the sugar. That's because of the soy sauce. It's not burnt. It's a uh, it's a purposeful crust. Um, Anyway, so three to five minutes there. Three to five minutes the first way. It took about three minutes, I would say. We can go back and look. It took about three minutes to get us there. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to slow cook it now. It's over medium low heat. Again, keeping all the steam in there, keeping the liquid in there. That way they don't dry out. Um, and this is going to take five to seven minutes, give or take. We'll check it in a minute. What we're looking for is the salmon to be super flaky. Uh, if you guys haven't cooked salmon before, it's definitely a fish that a fish that flakes apart when it's ready. Um, if it doesn't, it's going to hold together. It's going to look like uh, I don't know, kind of like chicken, yeah. So when you pull it, it's still going to want to hold onto each other. Whereas chicken, when it's done, it's just kind of you know you have the whole breast, you can cut through it, this that, the other. But this is going to flake apart. It's going to be amazing. I it, guys, I wish I could show you what this smelled like, or I mean, yeah, well, I wish I could let you smell what this smells like. This is amazing. All right, so we're a few minutes out on that. We're almost done. So, okay, if you guys remember, we had the salad, everything mixed together. I've let the lettuce or the nope, the parsley just start to wilt. Um, there's no heat on it. It's not going to wilt down. It's not like we're cooking. Um, it's not like we're cooking spinach or anything like that. And it really, there's not a ton of acid in it to really melt it down. There is a little bit of that lime juice. There's a little bit of that um, vinegar. But not really enough to to crush it down. All right, so with this. You know, you can use about as much as you like. Um, I think on the recipe, I think I used about a quarter cup. I'm probably going to go a little heavy here. Um, I'm going to probably go about a cup of it. About half. i got to use all of that anyway. So now we're going to just mix this up real clean. Just let those flavors come together. So the reason why I put the pomegranates on last is what I don't want to do is I don't want those seeds to get in the acid. And to start disintegrating on the outside and then what happens is the juice comes out lays on the plate and then remember that crunchy part of the seed i told you about it's not really intact anymore um and it's just kind of weird because you can't see them so you want to do you definitely want to put the pomegranates on when you're ready to serve within you know i don't know five ten minutes it's it's not going to happen right away you just don't want to let it sit for too terribly long so we got the salad Let's 
Let's see where we're at with these. Do I need this knife anymore? No. All right. Guys, I don't, I don't know what camera we're on, but as you can see, this is starting to flake. Go ahead and mess one up. This is not quite ready, but we're so close. If you see right there how it's still kind of a little bit over pink and a little bit moist, we're going to let that cook for probably another minute. That's the fattest part of our uh, fillets there. Um, so we're going to let that cook for another minute. I only did that to kind of show you. You can, If you feel on the top, you can see how they'll start to slide apart your... your um, I guess the parts of the meat that are together, right? They'll start to flake apart. That's usually how you'll tell is you'll lightly push. And if it starts to flake apart on you, uh, you're done. You don't have to tear it up with a knife like that. However, I wouldn't have been able to show you that it wasn't ready other than it would have been a little springy. So again, we're going to go for another, I don't know, minute, minute or two on that. Um, and we're almost done. Guys, something else we did two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, is in between recipes where it makes sense. We're going to throw up a recipe card, let you see what we've just done. Um, give me a second to reset. Because next we are doing a pomegranate compote over uh, dessert pancakes. I think it's going to be amazing. But if you can see, this is all savory stuff. So we want to get the savory out of the way so we can bring the sweet in. Um, do a little cleanup. We have some fish here. I want to make sure we wipe everything down. Um, you know, I you do what you can. You, you always want to make sure you have your, your dirty boards out, your sanitary boards in. Make sure everything's wiped down. Um, our boards are, I'm sorry, our rags are... Uh, uh, you know, sanitary liquid on them, bleach, whatever it is. Uh, but when you're making a new meal, clean everything out. Make sure you wipe everything down. Come back and start it over. All right, so these are done. I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't beep at us too much. You take this filet. I'm going to lay it right over the top like so. Do the same thing here like so. Put this one in here for later. There you go. See how that flakes apart? Just like that. That's what you're looking for. All right. Take this. There we go. Just turn, turn it just a little bit. Make sure you spill it all over yourself or it doesn't work. Just like that. Just like that. Boom. Done. There you go. So that is a pomegranate. Um, oh, guys, let me show you this. That is a pomegranate um, marinated salmon over a quick pomegranate salad. Uh, it's not going to be too over pomegranate-y. Uh, while you're using the same base flavors, look at all that oil from the fish. Uh, while you're using the same base flavors, it's not going to come across as, you know, I don't know. Like if you put a cookie inside of a brownie inside of a cake, like it's just going to be way too sweet. That's not what you're going to get there. All right, so this, you see that just wipe clean. There's, it's just a rag, right? Now we're gonna wash this. We are gonna wash this, but all that stuff was just stuck on the bottom of the pan. The amazing Swiss diamond cookware, man. The amazing cook, uh, the 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 coating on the cookware. That's it. It looks clean. It's not clean. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna wash this, but I just wanted to show you guys that. I mean, even melting sugar and soy sauce and fish uh, fat and everything into the pan isn't gonna make it sick. All right, I've got to reset. Give me three minutes. I'll be right back. We will move on to dessert. It's going to be my favorite part. Probably haven't tasted this yet. This is also going to be fantastic. Uh, see you guys in a few minutes.
Hey, welcome back. So, sorry, I'm the one that makes the uh, recipe cards, and supposedly our little system that I used them in decided to save them all weird. So, we are going to find out a way to put them in a post on our um, Amazon posty thing. Um, yeah, on our it's on our Amazon page. I don't know what they're calling it, or feed. I'm going to guess it's called a feed. Speaking of feeds, guys, if you haven't clicked that follow button, I haven't mentioned it today. I should be fired. Um, if you guys haven't clicked that follow button below uh, our, our name brand or right there on the video, you guys should go ahead and do that. It's going to do a couple things for us. It's going to let us know you're watching. It's going to let us know what you guys are liking. Um, it's going to let me continue to do this for you uh, as opposed to sit behind the desk all day. So it makes me excited to know that you guys are watching. Um, like always, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want me to use any ingredients, um, if you want to yell at us about some cookware you bought that wasn't ours from 1986, mark it down below. Let us know. Uh, we'll talk with you. We'll let you know. The customer service here is, team is fantastic. Uh, we reply to all the messages as soon as we can. Um, you know, we are always here to help you guys. All right. So we're still working on those breaks. I know you guys got to see me set up. I don't know if that's good or if it's bad, but we're going to get into it. So I'm making a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm making a pomegranate compote which we're going to put up over a buttery uh, buttery pancakes. Excuse me. So what I've got here is I have pre-made pancake mix, whatever you guys like. Um, I don't really even know what brand we have in there. We use pancakes a lot here to show off the cookware. Um, I am not here to make pancakes today from scratch. You definitely can. Flour, sugar, baking powder, uh, salt, mm, egg, oil, all kinds of fun stuff, water. I could get you a recipe for that if that's what you're looking for. This came in a box. I put water in it. It's going to be fantastic because that's not the star of the show. Star of the show is pomegranates. We talked about those earlier. I showed you guys how to peel them. If you're just getting here once this goes off of live um, and ends up on our wall, by all means, go back to the beginning. I showed you a real easy way to get into these. It takes about two minutes. People are scared of them. No need to be scared of these for sure. All right. So what we're going to do is we have a Swiss Diamond uh, hard anodized uh, non-stick, whoa, that one's probably a little hot. We're going to let that cool down. We have a Swiss Diamond um, non-stick, hard anodized um, soft pan here. What we're going to do here is we're going to put in a tablespoon of butter, which I think is going to just brown right away, so we're going to give it a second. Um, we're going to put in um, three tablespoons of sugar. We're going to put in a cup of our uh, pomegranate seeds, and we're going to put in two tablespoons of orange juice. Um, again, orange juice or one table, eh, two tablespoons of orange juice. Again, orange juice is not the star of the show. Whatever you got, uh, if you like it from concentrate, if you like it from the square bottle, if you like to pick it off the tree and want to use it from an orange, all of it's going to be great. We we'll just have, we just want it for a little citrus flavor, a little citric acid here. So we're going to take, again, we're going to put that butter in here. Yeah, it's a little hot. Things going to beep at me. Oh, it only beeps once. Nope, it beeps forever. All right. Then we're going to, you know what? I'm going to put my Two tablespoons of orange juice in there just to kind of cool that down. Let that butter bubble up just a touch. We're going to put our sugar in. Whisk this together. Okay. What you don't, we want to keep this on warm now. You don't want to bring this too hot. Okay. We're going to put in. Why is it still beeping? Guys, I need better stuff. Um, like down below so I can get better stuff, right? Comment, like, do something. Get me some better stuff. Uh, I promise, the better my equipment gets, the better the recipes get. We're going to put about a quarter or about a half a cup, I'm sorry, of the pomegranate seeds and any juice you still have in there um, into that pan. Now, we're going to raise this up to a boil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once it hits a boil, we're going to cover it, lower it, and simmer it for about five minutes. It doesn't. This does not take a lot of time. Do not be scared. I know compote may be a fancy word. It's really not. Um, I use a lot of people will yell and say don't put the butter in it. I like the butter in a compote because what it does is it's going to give you that richness that normally you would just have a lot of sugar and a lot of juice in there. It it boils down and it, while it's very sweet, it's also very I don't know if you cook it too far it's crystallized you know kind of crystallized. If you don't cook it enough it's pretty watery. This butter is going to cut it right down the middle. It's going to make it um, <clears throat> excuse me it's going to make it a little creamy which is what I'm looking for for a dessert. Again. Different if I was doing some kind of hard fruit stack or something. You guys, I love butter on my pancakes. I always use butter 
on the pan. I'm going to show you we don't need to use butter on the pan on the Swiss Army cookware, okay? Only once. All the rest of them I'm making, I'm going to have butter because I have to eat these. Notice I share the other stuff. I eat the sweets. All right. So, again, I made about two servings worth of um, pancake mix. I didn't measure it. Pancakes aren't the star of this. Pour it right in the middle. Even them out. You guys know how to tell when pancakes are done right? Say it with me. Right, it bubbles. It bubbles. That's right. So that, I've just got on warm. We're just going to let it sit. We'll keep an eye on it. You can see it whenever we flip back and forth to that camera. Um, what's going to happen is the middle is going to bubble. Uh, if you try to flip it too early, it's either going to be all gooey and flippy and not flip at all, or the middle is not going to be set. And when you try to flip it, it's just going to break apart on you. Wait till it's bubbled. Everybody likes a good pancake to be a little golden brown on the bottom. Uh, you don't want it to not, you know, you don't want it to not get golden brown because what's going to happen is exactly that. It's going to, um, it's going to fall apart on you when you cook it. All right, so I've simmered this down. We have reduced it by about a quarter. I'm going to put this on because what I want to do is I want to emulsify off all the flavors currently. I don't want to break it down. I'm sorry. I don't want to uh, reduce it too much yet. We are going to, I promise, ah, we don't need to yet. See, better equipment. I could have bigger bowls. I wouldn't have to worry about this. Hit that like button. Um, guys, this is our uh, eight, nope, 11 inch uh, nonstick fry pan. We have in, in induction, non induction, uh, lidded, not lidded. The inductions have lid, all kinds of sizes. This is our number one selling fry pan. This is the one you guys probably want to go for. So here we are. This thing is ready to flip. You can still see it's a little soft. Um, I think it's going to work though. I also made a bigger pancake than I ever should have. Let's see. Yep. Boom. Golden brown, just like you want it. Some people want to go a little farther. I wouldn't go any less. That's kind of exactly where I like them. Um, again, I could tell by the bubbles. I could tell by how it was sliding around. Um, I usually do smaller ones for myself because I get to eat 40 of them as opposed to four. So it makes me feel like I'm eating more, um, which, which I like to do. Okay. So what we've done here. All right. You guys. Are we looking at the right camera? Why don't you cut over to this camera if you would, guys. See how it's thickened up? See how we got a really red and rich sauce on this? Um, I'm going to let that boil down on low for probably another two minutes. That's almost exactly where you want it. If you uh, if you think it gets too thick, if you get in there and you're like, oh, no, it's really thick, it's really too tight, um, don't let it cool down because what will happen is it will start to crystallize on you. Put another pat of butter into it. Uh, that putter butter is going to make everything come back out, make everything, um, you know, oh, what's going on here? There we go. That patter butter is going to make everything kind of decrystallize a little bit, bring everything back to life. If you need to, hit it with a spot and a little orange juice. Uh, don't rush in and put butter in it. Don't rush in and put cream in it. I mean, I'm sorry, water or cream. Don't rush in and put, the, just shut up. Can I say that on there? I don't know what I can say here. Anyway, don't rush in and put water in it or don't rush in and put cream in it. Uh, that's going to create caramel like you have, uh, you know, like caramel chews or a hard caramel, depending on how far you've already cooked that sugar. Uh, it's, not what you're, it's not what you're looking for here. It's going to be way too sweet. It's going to be way too burnt flavor. Uh, you really just want this to, to break down. And again, if it gets too tight, loosen it up with butter, loosen it up with some of the juice you've already used. Um, so I'm going to cook a couple of these. You guys can stick around for a second one. You don't have to, but I am going to show you on this one. It's almost done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that other pat of butter. This isn't done yet. It's still warm. We're going to set that right on top. What's going to happen is it's going to start to melt. It's still going to come off like a piece of butter. It's still going to come off like you see in the breakfast commercials or the dessert, uh, dessert commercials, depending on where you're from. Um, but you want it to be a little melty. So when you go to eat it, you can take it with your fork and stir it around or spin it around or swish it around or whatever you want to do around. Uh, make sure you get butter on every bite. It's going to be amazing. Okay. So I'm turning this off. This one is done. Perfect. That's done. We are going to use a couple of these fresh, um, well, fresh, a couple of the non-cooked um, pomegranate seeds. This bad boy is done. I'm just going to plate it just like that in the middle. Now, remember, this is I was cooking it as a dessert, not as a breakfast, so we don't need to go crazy. We don't need to serve five or six or ten pancakes. Um, however, by all means, if that's what you're into, that's what you want. If you saved all your room for dessert, let's do it. So we got some compote on top, some fresh ones. You guys, if you didn't hear what I said earlier about um, pomegranate seeds, 
they'll stain everything. So make sure you're not wearing white. Uh, make sure your countertops, if they are white, <clears throat> make sure they're sealed well. You know, all kinds of stuff. I'm making this one for me. Butter in the pan. Guys, give me one second to pour this in. We'll do our wrap up while I finish cooking this. Get you guys out of here if you don't want to stay and watch me cook something for myself. Um, by all means. I don't need you to. You guys have stayed around for a while. I appreciate it. Um, this is what we do every week. So what we're going to do here in a few minutes is I'm going to pick a new ingredient out of the bowl. Uh, all the all the staff here has put ingredients in there. I have no idea what they are. Um, I don't even remember if I put any ingredients in there or not. But so I don't know what's coming. They've got five, six, ten, twelve things in the bowl. Uh, it changes every week. <clears throat> Hopefully something a little bit more fall-like this time, but we'll see. This one obviously was pretty spring. Um, but pomegranates, if you guys haven't used them, I think are such a big part of what can be a uh, big part of your – excuse me, let's put this in here. I think it can be such a big part of your uh, fruit diet that you may not have used before. So I love teaching people about it. All right. I may use too much butter. That's all right. We'll just cook a little longer. Guys, so again, this is RJ. We're with Swiss Diamond. This is the Swiss Diamond Kitchen. We come at you every day or every Tuesday, 2 o'clock. Um, we are trying to get to come at you guys twice a week. As the holidays get closer, we almost definitely will be here twice a week. If you have ideas, comment below. If you have a recipe you want us to try, if your grandma used to make something and you want me to try to get there, give it a shot. I am a trained chef. I used to work in restaurants. I now work here at Swiss Diamond. Um, so we can try pretty much anything. Again, you got questions, you got concerns about Swiss Diamond, the brand. You have questions about how to use, I mean, not, you want to learn how to do knife skills, you want to learn how to do eggs, you want to, you know, anything in the kitchen, uh, we can walk you through it. Just let us know what you're interested in. We want to make sure you're interested in what we're doing. Um, and I'm not just doing this and standing up here and looking at the camera for no, for no reason. Again, guys, this is our uh, HD nonstick line. This is the 11 inch fry pan. We used the 10 and a quarter earlier, um, as well as we used the, uh, the, the saucepan, the 8 inch. This is our hard anodized line. This is our 8 inch saucepan. Uh, both come in induction, both come in non induction. Um, this is the tool set. I believe the spatula itself is $14.99. The set is $54.99. Big things we have every week between now and Black Friday. We have new deals on our page. Everything has a coupon code. We're not messing with the actual price, but we'll put a coupon code on there. Um, it's more fun to click it. It shows you how much you're going to get off. It's Everything's a great deal. Uh, right now, I think our 10-piece set's on there. Um, we've got two or three fry pans on there. Uh, it, it's it's kind of amazing. Um, we're going to have the HD blowout also on what October 11 and 12. That's next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe. Um, so make sure you guys come by for that. Before I sign off, let's see what my next thing is. Give me a good one. What do you think? Can it be lamb? Let's let it be lamb. Do I want to do lamb shakes? I'll be with you guys for two days. Let's see what we got. It's anchovies. We're making Caesar salad. We're making anchovy pizza. No, I won't do either one of those. Let's see what we can do. Uh, again, I want to. The, the idea is we're going to do something that you guys probably haven't seen before that you can get at your store, may not have seen before, that you can get at your local store. Uh, try to make you not, infra not afraid of any of these ingredients. Next week, anchovies. We'll see you there. Tuesdays, 2 o'clock. I'm here every week, almost. Um, see you next time. You guys, I think that camera will stay up for a little bit. Maybe it won't. Comment down below. Give me your ideas. Uh, as I said, give me your wants, your needs as far as in the kitchen. Um, let me flip this pancake. I know it looks weird. That's how I like them. Um, see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Do me a favor. Click that like button. Click the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell, make sure you hit that. Comment down below. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to bring you another great recipe.